Hey, you know, last week I did a video on if you can do stock music licensing and sync licensing music at the same time. And some of you were like, yeah, that's great, but what's the difference? So today, that's what we're gonna talk about and we're gonna do a video on it. Are you ready? Here we go. So there seems to be some confusion about my last video where I talked about doing stock music and sync licensing music and how you can do both of them, but you can do them at the same time. And I've recently started moderating a Discord channel with my friend Stevie B. If you wanna be part of that Discord channel, we talk about lots of things. We talk about licensing, we talk about production, we talk about tips and tricks and all sorts of stuff. And it's absolutely free. So go down into the description of this video and you can be part of that Discord channel. We'd love to have you in there. You can also find information about Stevie B in the description below and his new production academy, which is just getting ready to launch. And so we're really excited about that. But one of the questions I got today on the Discord was from someone who said, what if I don't know what the difference is between stock music licensing and sync licensing music is? What if I just don't understand the difference? So I thought maybe there are people who would like to know the difference and like to know just general what is stock music licensing and what is sync music licensing. So here we go about that. Knowing the difference between stock music licensing and sync licensing is really important as we start into the sync licensing part of this channel. Gonna have a lot of content about that. And so I wanna make sure that everyone kind of knows the difference, at least as far as I understand it. I've told my story about how I got started in stock music and the libraries I started with, etc. You can see all that right up here. First, let's define stock music licensing. Well, generally, I think of stock music as music that's made for this kind of video. You might hear it playing right now. Music that you hear playing behind YouTube videos like this or corporate presentations. It's generally music made for the background. Now, I'm not talking about the background of a TV show or film. Sometimes those lines can cross, but for the most part, this is music made for the background of a YouTube presentation, a corporate presentation. You hear it, but you don't hear it. It's music made for the background. It's made not to stick out, and it can be in many styles. The other big difference is that in most cases, stock music is non-exclusive, meaning that many different companies and users can use the music at the same time. Now, I'm painting with a really broad brush here, as there is music used in TV, film, advertising, and gaming that may be non-exclusive. But generally, stock is going to be non-exclusive music that is designed to work in many stock libraries at the same time and be used by people just like stock photos are, stock video, stock sound effects, all that kind of stuff. And you'll usually find them in the same libraries. Another thing about stock music, it's generally available at a very, very low price. Many YouTube videos don't have a large audience, so that's why you can find stock music on Pond5 or Audio Jungle available for nine bucks or 25 bucks. Also, in many cases, that's the only payment for this music. And while it can be used many times by many different people at that price, it's usually only going to be used one time by a client. And also, there is no back-end PRO payment, which means they're not paying your BMI account and they're not paying your ASCAP account. Now, there can be exceptions to this, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So you may think, if this music is so cheap, they don't pay my PRO, and it's not exclusive, then I should just throw any crappy music I've got up, right? Uh, no. Uh, nah. It's very competitive out there. And while you might get from my description here that this music is second class music or something, that is far from the truth. First, to stand out these days on stock music libraries, your music better be top notch. It better be higher quality, well composed, and produced very well. Don't worry, they will reject you on Audio Jungle or Motion Array if they feel the music quality or composition is lacking. The second thing to remember with stock music and the reason it needs to be quality is because there is a bigger tier that you can put your music on. On Audio Jungle or Song Trader and other sites, if you want to use something for a TV or a movie, you won't be able to get it for $9. You'll have to pay a premium price. So why not just do this? Why not just do stock music licensing and put your music up there onto libraries? It's pretty easy and nobody 
has to approve you in most cases and have your big price if film or TV come knocking. The big problem is that music supervisors aren't really going to go to Audio Jungle or Pond5 when they're looking for the next big hit to put behind a song montage or they're looking for a score for the film. They're also not going to go to these stock libraries looking for great songs to put behind big time, big budget advertising. While all the music supervisors and the sync agents love finding indie music and finding gems, they are likely going to be looking at the next level of music library that they trust or directly to an artist or composer that they have a personal relationship with. This is where we start finding the difference between stock music and sync licensing. Music used in sync licensing tends to be music from trusted sources like exclusive libraries or sync agents or sometimes composer that a supervisor may know personally. Sync music that is used in TV, film, advertising, games is much more vetted. This means that like a music publisher, the music library personally found the composer or the artist and invited them into their catalog. This is what we're talking about with sync licensing, not music that is just going to be behind presentations or going to be part of YouTube videos and that is very low point of entry for composers. These music libraries didn't just open the doors and allow anyone who has music to submit it. They personally listened to each song and okayed each song because they thought it would make their library look good and stand out to music supervisors. While stock music on the whole, especially when you're talking about Pond5 and Audio Jungle and Motion Array, these are non-exclusive libraries. Sync music tends to be an exclusive deal that the composer signs with the library for a certain amount of time. No one else may use that song for sync purposes unless they come through that library. Some libraries do an exclusive deal for two or three years, sometimes five years. But then at some point, perpetuity can come into play, which means they can have your song forever if it starts making them money. And some of the larger libraries just do perpetuity from the start. Perpetuity means the song stays with the library forever. That doesn't mean that you can't take the song out and put it on Spotify or perform it or anything like that. This is only pertaining to sync license uses. Now, every library is different, so what they may decide you can and cannot do with the song might be different from library to library. Some sync libraries might say, we don't necessarily want it on Spotify, or we don't want you making YouTube videos. But most of the libraries I've worked with so far are happy that it's on Spotify or YouTube. So it's just gonna be depending on the library that you're working with. Now, you may be thinking, wait, what? Wait, what? Why would I ever give up my song to a library forever? Well, if that library is getting use after use and paying 2000 a pop for your songs, maybe that's okay. Or you can go ahead and make $9 every time it sells in a stock library. And that's even if it gets seen or found in a library of 900,000 songs. Exclusive sync libraries tend to be just that, exclusive. Your goal is to find a company that loves your music and let them represent you as part of their carefully curated catalog. These are libraries that music supervisors trust for their TV uses, their film uses, their advertising uses, and they come back time and time again because they know the quality is gonna be high and they know that library is gonna serve them and their needs. Music supervisors don't want to wade through 900,000 music files of varying quality and composers who may be good, may be not so good. The other thing is whatever they find at these non-exclusive libraries is available to anyone. So that's not exactly what you're looking for. If you are a music supervisor really looking for something special for a TV scene or a film score or for an ad use. Exclusive sync libraries are rarely putting songs in YouTube videos and corporate presentations. They are after TV placements, film placements, advertising placements, and gaming use, and other things that pay great upfront fees and may also pay your PRO in the back end. So if sync is so cool and big time, then why would you focus on stock music at all? This is a good question. And this is why there are the two kind of areas that people choose to work in. They might say, you know, stock music just fits me better. I can put stuff up quicker. 
I can get paid quicker. I don't care if it's cheaper. I just like to make that and the pressure is not as high. Or you could say, you know what? I really like creating pop songs or country songs or EDM or songs that I think could be used in a film or TV. I don't think they'd be so great in a YouTube presentation or, or something like that, but I think they would be great in a TV show or a film or a game. Think of it like being an author or an artist. Some short stories you might have work great for a local paper or online publishing. But then again, you're gonna write some things that are novels that really need to be published by a publisher and get out to a wider audience because they're bigger works. Maybe you draw diagrams that go in technical presentations, but you also paint beautiful paintings that can sell for thousands of dollars. Sync and stock are both mediums like that for musicians. You can distribute your music based on what kind of composition it is. Not everything is going to be built for sync licensing. Not everything will work as a stock music thing. To see my video on how I went from zero to 600 in stock music, you can see that right here. And for my video about my journey in sync music license, you can see that video right here when it's ready, but I don't think it's, it may not be ready yet. If it is ready, it'll be right there. So thanks for watching and I hope this helped.